get him, get him, get him. Good job, Sutton. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fish all gone. That's oh, a cheese. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Nice oh, one. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that one's even bigger. Butterfly this piece of fish by first cutting down the belly all the way to the tail along the rib cage. We are going to take off its head. Cut off for now. Oh. <laughs> Celebrity fish nose. How do I know from this eye? That's really disgusting. Is that really nasty? <laughs> and we're just gonna run down the side of the rib cage. So what Brian's doing here is just running the side of the blade of the knife right along that rib cage. And that is just kind of peeling the meat off of the rib cage. And then over here, there's this thin set of bones attached to the fin. And he's going to do basically the same process. Okay, when we get enough of this off, we're actually just going to cut it out with a pair of kitchen shears. So basically what this is, is the actual spine of the fish. There it is, you can see it there. And he's just cutting it out, like you said, with a pair of kitchen shears. There you go. Now we have our nice butterfly fish. We're going to clean it up a little bit, and we have a bunch of bones to remove as well. Because nobody likes to eat bones. Okay, so there are a lot of pin bones in porgies down here near the rib cage. Yeah, right, right along here and right along here. So you kind of feel mm -hmm. at them with your, your fingers. Grab your pliers, pull them out as you go. There we go, it's a, a bone. Just kind of feel them, they'll stick up when you run your hand this direction, finger this direction, you'll feel them stick you. So you run your fingers towards the tail of the like fish. That, like that. And I don't feel any there, I don't feel any there. Oh, feel one there. Okay, it goes from this state right into a bath with 50% uh, milk, 50% water, and some ice. Once a fish has been harvested, it immediately begins to decay and it produces ureic acid. One way to counter the production of this acid and clean it off the fish is to put it into a milk bath. Makes your fish taste like the moment you caught them. So that is 50% milk, 50% water, and then we've got some ice in there. And then it's just the um, butterfly fish. And how long does the, the stay in the milk bath? Um, really until you're ready to need, use it. Really 10, 15, 20 minutes is enough. But once you take it out, the process of uric acid begins to occur again. And so you gotta put it back in. So I just leave it till I'm ready to pat it dry and cook it. We are going to be dredging the fish before we saute it in the pan in some seasoned flour, which is some flour, uh, about a tablespoon, half a tablespoon of onion powder. Uh, exact measurements are really not Critical, about a tablespoon of garlic powder. Um, paprika, about half a teaspoon. About half a teaspoon of thyme. Or half quarter teaspoon, time. quarter teaspoon of thyme. Cayenne, about a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. We like our particular spice blend. So again, that's cayenne pepper, uh, ground thyme, little smoked paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, and that all goes into a couple of cups of regular flour. Now one thing that you might notice here that's really important is I did not add any salt. We do not salt that, we salt the fish. And we're gonna do that right before we're ready to make it because salt has a funny effect on seafood. Um, it very quickly penetrates to the center, but it can soften it. Um, and make it get too mushy, so we don't do it till right before we're ready. Unlike red meat, where we like to do it as early, like as two hours before, to help the salt penetrate already all, all the way to the center of the piece of meat. Okay, we're gonna put the seasoned flour into a baking tray. It is a closet. Makes it a little easier not to make a gigantic mess. Um, we're gonna see if our oil is hot. A little the water test. Yep, that's definitely hot enough. 
What kind of oil are you using? Regular vegetable okay. oil. Take our fish, do a dredge, one side only. Okay, so shake off the excess. Only. Yep, shake off the excess. Carefully lay it down, otherwise you'll find yourself with a face full of hot oil. Nobody likes that. This should cook pretty quickly. We're gonna check it in about two minutes. And we'll sit up with the spatula and see if we've got a nice, very pale golden color. We're looking to see a hint of coloration along the edge. We're not quite there yet. First side gives you a little bit of a sear, and across the second side steams the fish from underneath. Okay, so it's been about two minutes. So the brown, golden on one side, on the, on the meat side. So just flip it over, and as Brian said, that's actually going to steam the meat the rest of the way from the underneath. So we're cooking for five people tonight. We've got five fish, so that's why we've got two pans working at once. So as each fish comes out of the pan, they go into um, just a warm oven to hold. And they're on a foil covered sheet pan. Homemade. Thank God. Yep. I think that eating the porky that we caught was actually pretty fun. And it's also kind of funny to tell, oh, who got what porky? I think you got my porky. Which one did you get? That's pretty funny. That was funny. Yeah. You liked that? Sutton's a little bit picky sometimes with fish, but she liked this one. You caught three of the five fish that we ate tonight, so you did a great job catching these porgies. Did you learn anything that you might do differently next time? Yep. Yeah, what, what would you do differently next time? Stare at the rod the entire time, staring at blank. My pupils will not move from that rod, not to look at the sun, not to look at anything. Not if the sun comes falling down and the whole world becomes dark. My eyes will be laid on that rod and see if it, if it could wiggle, and then I do that. Yeah. Right. I like catch and cook. It's really fun. Yeah. Rather than just catch and eat. Catch and eat!